Good morning. In today's video, I'll discuss the brief, yet extremely important interaction between Prime Minister Modi and Chinese President Xi Jinping, which happened on the sidelines of the BRICS summit in Johannesburg. We have two entirely different narratives on this interaction. There is an Indian narrative and there is a Chinese narrative. The Indian narrative has been given by the Indian Foreign Secretary who said that the two leaders had a conversation. He stuck to the word conversation and he never specified where exactly the conversation took place. But he said that Prime Minister Modi told the President, Chinese President, about the need to have a peace and tranquil line of actual control. And thereafter, the two leaders directed the officials to expedite the de-escalation on the line of actual control. If you see this, this is the official Indian narrative that without peace on the line of actual control, th there can be no normalization of bilateral relationship. Now, the Chinese narrative was entirely different. First of all, the Chinese narrative does not mention disengagement or de-escalation or line of actual control. Nothing is there. And their narrative is that on the request of the Indian side, the two leaders had in-depth discussions where Xi Jinping spoke about the need for regional peace and the global peace. And he asked the Indian Prime Minister to see the big picture and to put the border issue in the perspective of the big picture. Again, we see this is the standard Chinese narrative that they have been holding for a long time. Now, before I go into uh, explaining these two narratives, and why exactly they were different. I would like to say, and this is important, that right from when Modi became the Prime Minister of India in 2014 and all his interactions with Xi Jinping, there have always been two different narratives. An Indian narrative and a Chinese narrative. Take the case of Doklam crisis of 2017. Now in 2017, at the height of the Doklam crisis, in June, Modi met Xi Jinping on the sidelines of the SEO summit in Astana and there the two leaders agreed to have an informal summit. Now informal summit has two basically uh, two, two composition, two, two components. Uh, first of all, informal summit means that it is not a structured dialogue. It is an informal freewheeling dialogue. Uh, between the two heads of the government. The whole idea is that we side skirt the bureaucracy and whatever core issues are there, we build up a personal mutual trust and repo and we discuss them. And the second is that it was agreed that this informal summit, both the leaders uh, should have every year and they should alternate between Delhi and Beijing. This is what was agreed. So, as a consequence of this, the first informal summit was held in Wuhan in April 2018 where Modi travelled to meet Xi Jinping there. Now, if you see the, the official uh, MEA readout of this uh, Wuhan summit, it only talks of inanities, it talks of platitude as if nothing much happened in this the summit, informal summit. Interestingly, not only Modi went for the Wuhan summit, within two weeks, he had another summit which India asked for in Sochi in Russia with the Russian President uh, Putin, President Putin in May of 2018. So the big question here is that everybody should ask, or people never asked at that time, what was the need for the Indian Prime Minister to seek two summits back to back? Well, in my assessment, it was political expediency because the 2019 elections were around the corner and certainly Modi wanted that the Doklam issue crisis don't ex escalate any further, does not become a war. So he wanted that to be calmed and he wanted Putin to be the guarantor of the peace between India and China, which is why he travelled to Sochi. Now, I spoke of the Indian narrative. Then we got to know the Chinese narrative after a few days, which was entirely different. 
that was given out by the Chinese ambassador in India and he wrote an article in the Tribune newspaper on the 6th of May 2018 where he said that he was part of that Wuhan interaction which lasted more than 9 hours between the two leaders and both the sides agreed on close development cooperation. In tangible terms, two things were agreed by both the leaders. One, a formula was proposed by China, accepted by Modi and the formula is China India plus. Plus is a small nation of South Asia. So the whole idea was that India and China will work together for connectivity and infrastructure building for economic upliftment of the smaller nations in South Asia. So it could be China, India, Nepal or China, India, Afghanistan or China, India, Sri Lanka. So it was China, India plus for nations of South Asia. And the second thing that was agreed is that both sides would expedite the BCIM. Now this is the Bangladesh, China, India, Myanmar corridor. This was agreed. Now why Modi agreed to this is absolutely strange. Because what the Chinese ambassador said or what he wrote in the paper was not rebutted by the government of India. Why I am saying it is strange is because this is one of the corridors or this was one of the corridors of the Belt and Road Initiative which had six corridors of which the flagship corridor was the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor on which the Indian side had vehemently project, uh, objected that CPEC, it came, it went through the disputed area, uh, Gilgit Baltistan, which belonged to India. So why would Modi accept that? But this is what the Chinese said, and as I said, it was not rebutted. But nothing happened after that meeting. There was peace. Doklam settled, settled down uh, for the moment. So all that we saw in terms of the meeting was a bit of a training for the Afghan diplomats under the China India plus um, format, nothing further happened, nothing on connectivity, nothing on infrastructure. Then we had the 2019 general elections and Modi came back with a far more majority than he had got in 2014 general elections. Now the point was that the Chinese wanted the second informal summit and that as agreed was to be in Delhi. So, before that could come about, we know on 5th of August 2019, things happened in Jammu and Kashmir. One, 370 was removed, Article 370 and new maps were created. Where Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, they were now shown in the maps as Union Territory. Now, I must digress here to make a point, which is very important. As far as the Chinese were concerned, they objected to cartographic aggression. What is cartographic aggression? They said that drawing of a boundary for the Ladakh Union Territory was unacceptable because never before there was ever a boundary between Ladakh and Xinjiang and they were right. So, in fact, on the 11th of August, Jay Shankar, the foreign minister, travelled to um, Beijing to explain to the uh, to his counterpart Wang Yi there that look, what we have done is only on the map. Nothing changes on the ground, but they did not accept that. And hence, this point needs to be emphasized. This was the sole reason why April 2020 happened. It was a reply of the Chinese to the cartographic aggression of. India by a physical aggression of their own coming and occupying our territory. But now let's continue with the main thing that I was talking about the second informal summit. Now certainly Prime Minister Modi and the government was not keen that Xi Jinping come here. Why he was not keen is because immediately after 5th August 2019, Pakistan was perturbed. and. We know that Prime Minister Imran Khan and Army Chief General Bajwa, they travelled, both travelled to Beijing. They met up with Xi Jinping because they, were, they basically wanted his advice on what next to do.
the Chinese advice. So he advised to restrain to them. We know that he, he advised restraint because eventually what happened was that the Pakistanis came up with their first national security policy where they said that Kashmir is core issue but let's focus on development between the two countries an entirely different subject. The point I am making is that Xi Jinping was keen to come to India, very keen to discuss all these things with Prime Minister Modi and the Indian side was reluctant. Why reluctant? Because first the dates were not given and then October was given, October 2019 for the second informal summit in Chennai. Knowing fully well that the Indian army was having an exercise called Exercise Him Vijay in Arunachal Pradesh which the Chinese say is a disputed area. They say that it belongs to them. But so much determined were the Chinese for their president visit that actually the exercise which was happening on the ground, their ambassador in Delhi gave a statement that there is no, I mean this is precisely what he said that there is no, no existence of the exercise on the ground. They denied it that it is not there and eventually he did come for the second informal summit. At the end of the second informal summit, the narrative given out or the official readout of the Indian side was that the two sides discuss mutual trade. Nothing was spoken about Jammu and Kashmir, it was not mentioned at all. But it was Wang Yi, the foreign minister who had travelled with his president to Chennai and who was part of the second informal summit, he said to the press and this was reported in the Hindu on his way back that look two things were suggested by the Chinese president to the Indian Prime Minister. One Xi Jinping suggested that we need to expand China India plus format, expand to not only have South Asian countries but to also increase to involve the South East Asian nations that this is where we should do connectivity together and we should do infrastructure building together and more important. He told, according to Wang Yi, he told Prime Minister Modi that we need to focus on development of the region and there should be peace between India and Pakistan, India and China and Pakistan and China. But this was not reported at all by the Indian readout or by the Indian media. Now, why do we have these two different narratives? That is question number one. And the second question is coming back to what happened at the BRICS. So why we have these different narratives is because all along India's foreign policy has been based on projection. When I say projection, it is not based on hard power. It is not based on real power. And when we talk of hard power, it has basically three components. It is about economic power, it is about military power, it is about technology power. There is a huge gap as far as the hard power is concerned between India and China. So since this is the first time since independence that we have two live borders, the border with Pakistan and the border with China which are both live, the need is is very important for the Prime Minister to project that he is strong enough or India's national security is strong enough to take on both the fronts. But now let's come to this, uh, uh, the BRICS interaction, why this narrative was different. Now you see the thing is that in this we know that attempts were made by the Indian side to have a formal interaction between the two heads of government on the sidelines of the BRICS summit. Something that Xi Jinping did in his two and a half days tenure, stayed in Johannesburg. We saw him meeting with most of the heads of government. They were there and he met them, but certainly not India. He did not meet Prime Minister Modi. And in my assessment, again, the reason was very simple. He had nothing further to say. Nothing further than what? 
twice his foreign minister had come recently once his defense minister had come to say the same thing that look we need to put the border in a correct perspective we need to normalize relations and in any case things were moving now so what was the need for xi jinping to have a formal interaction with prime minister modi so why were things moving now because as i spoke in my last video on the 24th of july at the brics meeting wang yi china's top diplomat he met up with national security adviser dobel where as far as the indian readout concerned was concerned it just spoke of the same things that dobel told wang yi that look we need to have peace on the line of actual control see when they talk of peace on the line of actual control they are basically talking of three things because this is what the modi government has repeatedly said that we want to through negotiations go back to the status of the april 2020 2020 which means there should be complete disengagement there should be de escalation and there should be de induction of troops and as i have mentioned in my last video that the despite making all these claims in the parliament and outside the parliament to the domestic audience the fact of the matter is that 3 years back on 10th of september 2020 the joint statement was signed between india and china where only the disengagement was mentioned nothing else and that too on chinese terms and why this was signed is as i said it was basically it was a compromise formula because government the government did not want war they didn't want any escalation after the galwan uh, killings simple the, even the narrative of wang yi was entirely different which was not mentioned by the indian side and his narrative was that the consensus which has been agreed by the two leaders that is modi and xi on the sidelines of the brics summit held in bali of november 2022 needs to be implemented and that is precisely what is happening this 19th round of talks was about that only the 19th round of talk was after a gap of 3 years finally implementing or executing what was agreed in the 10th september 2020 joint statement and that is happening now while this is happening on the ground the indian side is fully aware that the pla will not go back because pla has put a very clear condition that you make new maps don't show ladakh as a as a as a union territory don't create a border i mean which indian government will not do simple so therefore this is a narrative which is being built up to once again show that look the modi government is strong and they were able to again convey to president xi jinping their message the fact of the matter is it was meaningless the last narrative of the two sides thank you